for something something. <laughs> I don't think so, man. That's not me. <laughs> okay. Chris I'm, might I'm trying Chris to get the DJ. Huh? I said Chris you might do it. Do it? He's a DJ. Go for it, Chris. Yeah, give him a little bit of beatbox. <laughs> I really want to start getting you guys like involved in this. I know it sounds funny and kind of just weird, but it's it's actually kind of important. A little exercise. Actually, Crypto did a great job today, but uh, yeah, just, yeah, just did, keep I'm it not gonna ask short, short and fuzzy. I got to get going. Okay. Everybody, feel free to start recording. Welcome, everybody. Today is Friday. January 15th, 2016. Welcome to another Beyond Bitcoin Hangout, where we are going to be talking today with Chris4210 and Ken Code from the BitShares Talk Forums and BitShares Munich. They are going to be talking a little bit more about Open POS today. Uh, we have had them on for the past three or two weeks, rather, uh, for those who have been attending and listening. And to listen to them, they have been doing some really amazing stuff with a mobile wallet and marketing and hangouts within BitShares Munich, or the the Munich area, uh, which is why they call it BitShares Munich. And they're going to be here today to talk a little bit about some updates on the project, the updates on the crowd uh, donation or crowdfunding. I don't know what you guys call it. Um, their efforts and provide some answers to any community questions thereafter. If anybody has any uh, questions that, or comments that they would like to plug in there, please wait until after the little update session and then we'll move into that. And if you don't feel like asking the questions out loud, please type them in the uh, the conference message channel in the left bottom hand corner of the client and I will ask them for you. Uh, with that said, Ken, I'm just going to go ahead and give you the torch. Thanks. Um, I'm going to keep it kind of short and sweet tonight. My girls were begging me for to, to make dinner. So, um, but sure. we've got, uh, we've got quite a bit done this week. Um, lots of user interface fixes uh, <laughs> are now done. Uh, we've added a lot of updates to the QR code features and the e-receipts feature. Um, so when you're at a point of sale or you're, when you're at a cash register paying your bill, for example, or buying your groceries, um, it automatically sends the receipt to your phone through the QR code. Um, so we got that going. Um, we actually changed the color of the QR code to a dark green. I know it's just a branding thing. Um, but we tested it out on multiple phones and different platforms too, so that's it still works great. Um, I just wanted it to be something other than black because it's just so passe, I think. But uh, anyhow, I'll let you guys the judge and know what you think of it. We're going to be releasing Alpha 8 um, late tonight. Uh, hold on one second. Sure. Okay, sorry okay. about that. Uh, so let's see, beyond the QR codes, and the majority of the work that we've done this week is all user interface stuff. So basically taking my design and converting it into code. Still there, Ken? Get hungry, boy, they don't let up. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if that's uh, what was going on or if you just yeah, got out. That's why, man. Yeah, pulling on my shirt and everything else for crying out loud. Um, so yeah, the majority it's okay. of it's AJ all can been, edit that out. The majority of it's been all user interface um, stuff this week. Also, we've got um, the point of sale stuff um, moving along nicely now. And if we stay on schedule, which everything looks like it is, and I have full faith in my team, we should have um, the first point of sale system ready for release by March. So um, everything's on track with the, the point of sale systems too. And um, like you guys know, or, or at least Fuzzy, I know you know, um, Odoo is just the first integration that we're doing. Um, there's a number of different point of sale platforms um, that I'm integrating with. So Odoo is just the first, uh, but we'll have that out by March. And we have three 
um, separate business uh, businesses that are going to be hopefully if everything goes well with our launch in March um, that will be using the point of sale systems right off the bat. One of them is a coffee shop, another one is a brewery, and another one is an electronics, electronics. retailer chain. So um, yeah, um, lots of stuff has been done this work uh, this week, and um, it's looking nice. But I'll try to upload the latest version, um, ver uh, Alpha Eight, tonight. Um, if it if it gets too late tonight, then I'll probably just upload it in the morning. But um, I'll put it on this link right here. Let me post a link for you guys. Sure. Okay, so there's a link. Um, if you look at the second post on that thread, that's where I will dump the Alpha 7 download, the Alpha 8 download right there. So, and anybody who has already set up a wallet, um, it's fully backwards compatible too. So um, I'm making sure that um, if you've created an account in the wallet or imported one or whatever, it's not going to mess up your account or anything like that. And all your funds and everything, just they stay put. Basically what happens during an upgrade from Alpha 7 to Alpha 8 or any future versions is it just basically modifies the inter user interface and the new features that we've added. So any funds or account information um, or, and stuff like that, it, that, that stuff is not touched. The only stuff that's getting touched is, is all the, the, the feature additions and stuff that we're adding. So it's mainly user interface stuff, like I said, right now. Got you. So the, the various changes are not going to affect anything that's, that's in the code that's touching their, their actual funds. Right, exactly. And um, another question that popped up on the forum too about um, touching any kind of graphene core code or anything like that. This doesn't modify anything in graphene or anything like that. These are apps that are sitting on top of. So you don't have to worry about um, anything at that level being, being, being modified at all. So th these are all apps that are all web-based, React.js based. Um, well, actually, no, the Odoo thing has some jQuery. Um, but other than that, everything is all open source, and I've been uploading everything to GitHub um, roughly once a week too. So we keep everything in Atom or, or in, our, in, our, in, our, in, our, in our IDs our ID. locally, and then we upload to GitHub. jQuery is nothing more than uh, you know JavaScript. It's at the same level as React JS actually, so there's no worries in terms of that. Yeah, it's all just front end stuff. So um, we're trying to get everything migrated. Uh, like our, our old code into React JS too. So, because we did have some stuff in um, jQuery, but it's just, I don't know, it's outdated and everything that we're doing for, for Bitchers um, and CNX is doing for Bitchers is all React stuff. So, React JS. So, um, we're following along those same same guidelines. Uh, Little J has a question here for you. Can we promote Odoo and smart coins to other businesses? Is there a best practice for doing this? Yes, and there will be two different ways we can do this because we're releasing the Smart Coins POS for Odoo as a module, which um, I'm working with their management trying to make it part of their core product. Um, and then it's also going to be a free app in the Odoo App Store. So the Damn. best way to market it definitely is just wait till we get it out there first as an app um, because that's what most people are going to understand. And definitely their management is not going to accept um, something into their core product until we have a few case studies out there. Um, and so that's what Chris and I are working on locally. And once we have the first version of SmartQuest POS for Odoo out there, I'm going to announce the hell out of it. So I'm hoping that it's not just us <laughs> trying to get three three different uh, chains onto onto this uh, to try it out. I'm hoping the community and Open POS holders um, will help us to start promoting it too. So um, Odoo has a great partners page too. If you check it out, if you go to odoo.com/partners. Um, you can see a lot of the other companies that, that are working with their stuff. But um, lucky for us, we're first to market um, with this kind of thing. There was one other company called Revel that had um, a Bitcoin integration, but it didn't seem to go so well. Um, and I think that's in part due to their uh, volat the, you know, the volatility of, it, of Bitcoin and also the number of centralized exchanges that have been, that have been getting hacked. So. Uh, one thing that I have, I hope that I have solved with that problem, too, in, in uh, mass adoption, 
with crypto uh, cryptocurrency technology with point of sale systems is the fact that we're offering more than one. So the smart coins POS systems, for example, will be able to accept every single smart coin that BitShares offers, plus all the UIAs and FBAs that BitShares offers, plus thanks to block trades, thank you, Dan and Eric, uh, their bridge now is embedded, it's, it's part of the smart coins POS systems and um, hopefully Alpha 9 of the mobile wallets as well. So now you can have basic, you, you can pay with basically any of the cryptocurrencies that block trades shifts into, as well as all of the products that BitShares offers. So what that means basically is you can go to a cash register with your mycelium Bitcoin wallet, if you're still a, a Bitcoin user, and pay at the cash register with your mycelium wallet. So what happens is, is the smart coin POS system generates a QR code for that particular coin that they're asking for. So everything that block trades offers, now our POS systems and our mobile wallets are gonna be able to offer as well. Vice versa, you know, but it's um, two way. So sending and receiving, just through a simple QR code. Well, that's, that's awesome. Um, I have a couple questions that are actually kind of branching off of this to a degree. Um, one is speaking of this, uh, when will this be? Oh, where is it? It was asked by once upon time. It's just Android still, right? Uh, so has where are you on the Apple? store and the is app we're not going to put it in their stores i'm not even going to pay their fee um until we're out of beta so right now gotcha. I, I still want i still want to keep on calling it now uh, i don't even like calling anything a beta until i have personally made it as bug free as possible um and as feature rich or as close to my milestones as, as i can possibly get it and the community says, yeah, I don't see any bugs. I mean, it's kind of slow and the user interface could be tweaked here and there, but I don't see any bugs. Good. Boom. That's the day that I say, okay, now let's just make those final little tweaks or whatever to the user interface. And now I will call it a beta one and announce it to the public so we can get some real hammering on it, some real QA, QC quality control going yeah. on the product before I release it to those app stores. Because somebody else had asked me about that too. Well, why don't you have a... Um, a partner account with Apple. And I said, well, because I don't want to pay Apple's $99 a year fee until I absolutely have to. I want to have a product that's perfect before I even waste my time trying to, to get Apple to accept this in their store. Um, Google is very open about these kind of things, but Apple has been very difficult about cryptocurrency related apps. Um, but Android is, is uh, being released right now so we can get um, some of the UI and just the basics out of the way first, and then we'll release the jailbreaked uh, iPhone version um, before the end of this month, I'm sure, um, within the next couple of weeks. Um, and then we also have a Windows phone version, which will be coming out right about the same time, probably around the first week of February. And then, uh, geez, who was it who suggested that? Somebody said, uh, uh, what the heck is the name? Oh, Asteroid. I don't even use Asteroid, but considering that the, their stuff, it just basically requires you to be open source. And uh, I read through their guidelines. Uh, I'm basically like, well, we meet all those guys. So I don't see any reason why we can't get our apps, our, our mobile apps into the Asteroid store too. Um, one other thing I did have a request on the forum is if, if you guys know anybody who has a black phone too, I would really like to try out our mobile apps on the black phone too. Have you guys considered uh, contacting black phone and seeing about a test device or even seeing if there's a, like a program an emulator that they have that would be able to work and function in that way? Good idea. I haven't seen one and yeah, I wish. 
Are you, uh, oh, oh, Ken, are you involved with uh, any of these uh, uh, XDA developers and, and other other uh, telephone, other cell phone kind of development sites or hacking sites? That's where you'll get that kind of information. Well, being that we're all open source, everything that we're doing is open source. That's kind of opened a lot of doors for me. So um, I have to stay focused. Though. Right now, my focus is get it out there, out of beta for Android, iPhone, Windows Phone, and hopefully we, we can get it out to this um, uh, this F-Droid store too. But um, I don't see any problem getting it released on Android App Store right away. Um, and the Windows Phone Store, they seem kind of uh, desperate for apps. So we'll probably get it out to the Windows Phone Store pretty easy. And the F-Droid Store for sure. I mean, that's how it looks to me. The only problem I might see is actually um, getting it into the Apple App Store because of their so anti-cryptocurrency. But either way, even if Apple doesn't approve it for their App Store, um, we'll still release the file. So that you guys, if you have a, a an iPhone that has a has, has been jail, how do you say that? Jail broken, jail broke, whatever. Uh, yeah. Then you'll be able to install it on your iPhone too. Ken, have you heard from anyone else besides me how heavy it is on data usage? Yeah, and I brought, well, no, to answer, to, to, nobody else has mentioned it, but um, that matters a lot to me, too, uh, just because of my financial situation. Um, I don't like paying for minutes more than anybody else does. So um, I did bring that up with the, with the guys. Um, it's being addressed. So I'll try to make it um, as slim as possible. But um, as you know, every three seconds, it's going ping, 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 ping. So that's Maybe, that's maybe you have a switch in there or something that just turns it off. Like that just disconnects it from the API or something. Well, I did that fuzzy. Um, I have a three or a three minute timer on it. So if you don't touch your phone for three minutes, uh, there's a it, and I put it in the app settings, so it'll automatically just close the wallet after three minutes of of inactivity. So awesome. hopefully that'll help save on data usage too. You know. I think a lot of apps Definitely. out there have a similar type of thing where, uh, you know, depending on their data usage, you can go in and manually turn it off when you're, you know, not on Wi-Fi or whatever. But that makes a lot of sense to have sort of the default setting be, uh, you know, shut down after three minutes or whatever. Somebody mentioned, well, hey, can you make that modifiable, you know, instead of three minutes, got to make it two minutes and whatever. And, um, yeah, maybe in version 1.1 or something, but... Um, like I said, I, I just want to get this out the door first so that we have a working product um, that solves all the major problems that we've been facing for a long time and and getting mass adoption and getting people to even hear about BitShares, you know, and get, get some more meetup groups set up and stuff like that. But um, at some point, yeah, probably version 1.1 or 1.2 or something like that, I'll make that three minutes itself editable. How, how's your, uh, I, I was going to ask another question, Little Jay here got to it. Uh, first, how's your crowdfund going? Um, it's gone really well, actually. Um, so yeah, we have, we have no complaints. Um, we have all the money that that, that we need to to move forward. So um, we could we could always use a little bit more to you know further the project and get us into version two and version three and so on. Uh, my ultimate goal is like in version four. I don't know if you guys have seen the roadmap that I um, that I put on the forum uh, a few weeks ago, but. Um, in the roadmap I have, I would also like to, once we get the, you know, get out of beta and get it onto all four platforms, is have this uh, very, very simplified version um, for Android Wear and Apple Watch, too. For the Apple Watch? For, for all those Apple Watch people out there. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, here in Munich, people have a lot of money. It's this is a very ritzy, um, affluent city, and you see those Apple watches everywhere. Like everybody here has an iPhone, and I'm kind of a geek, I guess, because I have an Android. But um, <laughs> yeah, I just I mean I see those things everywhere, so I don't know. I just like you know what? Why not, man? I mean it's all open source, and all we have to do is just strip out the stuff that's not really needed for the for the um, for the watches. So it shouldn't be that that hard, and I would like to eventually move in that direction as well. I, I was thinking, actually, when you said earlier that uh, that the first three businesses that you've got lined up are a coffee shop, a a brewery, and a and a uh, electronic store, and I thought, well, 
that that covers about 95 percent of uh discretionary income spending right there so <laughs> i think you're on the right track yeah we all, we all need to go out each one of us needs to go out and get one coffee shop and one brewery and one electronic store and and before we know it we'll we'll, we'll have uh we'll have everybody's money pouring in don't go hit up that shop. Ferrari dealer. <laughs> or, you know what? One of the businesses I, I think I mentioned in the last week is Cox Communications. I mean, it doesn't have to just be small. I mean, we're, we're of course, going to use small companies as our case studies. But the electronics chain, they're not small at all. I mean, they're a billion-dollar corporation. So what I would like to see, though, is use them as a case study. Um, and things are looking pretty good so far with them. So I would like to see somebody like um, Odoo's customer, Cox Communications, to start uh, using the smart phones uh, app as well, which would be awesome because now Cox could, you know, how many customers do they have? A million probably? I don't know. I have no clue how many customers they have, but that's just huge because now customers can call in like on Home, home Shopping Network and pay Home Shopping 123 account, you know, for their, for their fuzzy bunny or whatever the hell they're buying on, my, on the TV. So are you going are you um have anything programmed in that that will allow users voluntarily to uh submit anonymous data for purposes of um you know your your um um what do you call it studies and and figuring out the statistics so you can sort of present that down the line to to future um you know uh, uh point of sale companies no, you mean like something that we could set up on the forum or something? Just take ideas and help help everybody out with the sales pitch. Sort of well, thing? no, I mean actual like concrete data, like how when, when are people using it? How are they using it? What kind of money are they spending? I mean, you know, you see most programs. Well, I don't say most programs, but a lot of programs you download, and yeah, they're maybe coming from these sort of big, uh, uh, scary uh, companies that that you know say, hey, you know, would you mind? Uh, submitting anonymous uh, data statistics for purposes of, you know, our own analysis. Um, and but probably it's mostly legitimate what they're doing. I mean, yeah, they do a lot of sort of backdoor stuff where they're stealing, stealing your, you know, your info too. But I think that, you know, that could probably be useful if you could figure out a way to track statistically how people are actually using it, you know, some concrete data that could be sent back to you, back back to a server or whatever, and then you could compile all that and, and take it out and on the sales call and say, hey, look at this, you know, there's uh, there's uh, 50,000 people that used this app last month and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Like, does that make sense? I mean, is that something that could actually be, be um, programmed into the app? Do you think that'd be advisable considering it's a cryptocurrency or, what? you know, what are your thoughts on that? I don't see why not, but as far as getting statistical data like that, you can go to Dun and Bradstreet or places like that, but there's a lot of companies that just specialize in getting that sort of data for you, but it's not free. They charge quite a bit, actually. One thing that Chris is working on, too, from a, from the marketing side of things um, is getting that kind of data, and he is working on something right now where he's going to be able to get, get us a list of every single Odoo uh, business in specific areas, like, 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 for example, Munich. Nice. So we can see who exactly already in Munich is using Odoo. So we don't have to walk to every store in the freaking city to try to find them. But we can say, hey, there's a free app, you know, I'd really love to be able to pay you guys. And I, I might even buy a little more. And did you know that you can offer rewards cards? And it doesn't even, you know what I mean? Give them, give them his, uh, give them his uh, sales spiel. Like, I'm not a marketing guy, so. But um, I mean, there's a lot of different angles you could get it from it. But as far as putting it into code crypto, um, that's not something that I'm really focused on right now. I just really, uh, as far as it almost sounds like, how did you choose this company and why? And what I did is I did some for about a week solid, really, when you stack up all the hours. Um, I've done some pretty extensive research on which companies to go with and in what order. And I chose Odoo for a number of reasons um, to go with them first, because they're not too big. They're relatively small. They're open source. They have probably the best reviews on the internet. They're global. Uh, I just and, and the people that I've worked with there have just been outstanding. They've been extremely helpful, um, almost at my beck and call. So 
um, anything that I needed to discuss with them or ask them about technically, um, they're they're there for me. So, and that's what I want. And some of these bigger companies like like SAP, they're impossible to work with because they're so big now. They don't care. They don't care if they get a new customer or a new partner or, and it's just ridiculous. And I know how that would benefit bit, bit shares to be able to integrate with them too, but. Man, we, we got to get some case studies out there first before I, you know, go after the big boys. Yeah. To be able to actually show them what's been accomplished and what can be done. No, uh, it saying... sounds like you're going around it in a very, you know, organic way, which is good. I mean, you got to yeah. sort of have your feet on the ground at the same time as you're as you're dreaming big. And um, I'm I'm excited about what you're doing. This is this is. Uh, I feel like this is a really big step that for some reason or another has never manifested in the last two years. Or I know, you know, some people were, were uh, I know El Mato had a, had a mobile wallet. I haven't heard anything from him recently about what he's, he's been doing with that, but yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy and excited about what you're doing, Ken. This is, this is, uh, this is really good stuff. Well, yeah. you and know, there's something man. else I want to, I want to, if there's any other developers who like aren't doing anything <laughs> there, we drastically, Bitchers drastically needs a job site. The forum, that ain't cutting it, man. We need more than that. You know, xbtfreelancer.com, cryptogrind.com, coinality.com. The, all of those are Bitcoin accepting freelancer job sites, but there is nobody doing a smart coins based job site and the only way to get the money moving in our ecosystem is to have places to get it and have places to spend it hence the pos systems but you need a job site how does somebody in africa get smart coins well that's easy but why would somebody send them smart coins why do i do some work or something i don't know I don't care, but there would be a job site for freelance or, or just anybody who wants to make some money. And Coinality, I know, um, I, what's his name? Richard, I think, over there. It, it runs Coinality.io. And, and Talant is is developing the site for Coinality.io. But there's no smart coins integrated. And Coinality.io is the number one crypto accepting job site right now. But why don't you accept and, and with escrow too? You need we need escrow services, man. We need a job site. Somebody this basically copy Upwork or freelance or freelancer.com or something like that. Just copy the freaking site. Who cares? Put it into React.js. And what I will do is I will the API from your site and integrate it with the finder in our mobile wallets. What easier way is there for you to start earning smart coins? And to get the money moving in our ecosystem, this is what we need, man. We need volume. You need you need productivity based um, conclu- um, systems. We're working on something called Curiosume, and seriously, you have to take a look at that. It's you know, if job sites worked, they would work by now. Um, without cryptos, there's got to be a different way to organize uh, sets of knowledge uh, and to do the matching, the supply and demand for knowledge. And uh, and and base something in pure productivity, um, and there's no, other no, solutions. You have to look at Curiosity. Uh, those, those sites work great. I'm not complaining about how the sites work. What I'm complaining about is the fact that none of them are accepting smart coins yet. Those sites, like if you look at Bitrated.com, for example, okay. That is where your reputation is maintained. That they have escrow services. Um, Coinality.com has been around for a long time, and you have you start to build up a reputation on there. And if I'm going to hire somebody, that's the first thing. I don't care about your resume and all the buzzwords you throw at me. And oh, I know React JS. The hell you do? Okay, I want to see your five star reviews. I want to see the amount of money that you made. I want to read the reviews from the people that you have helped. That's the stuff that Coinality does, and that's what we need in smart coins. I don't care about Bitcoin anymore. There's enough Bitcoin accepting job sites out there, but we need to get the money moving in our ecosystem. And that's gonna require mobile wallets, point of sale systems and jobs. Yeah, but you, you, know, you can't eat software. That's, that's pretty much the bottom line. 
Well, the Definitely. nice thing about these these freelance sites is it's not just software development. I mean, there's all kinds of different things that are offered on these sites, all kinds of different services, you know, from writing to marketing. I mean, you could you could probably theoretically do anything you wanted that didn't, you know, necessarily require a local one to one interaction or maybe even local ones, too. But I think what he's just talking about mainly is is integrating smart coins into this functionality that is a proven business model. I mean, it's not, yeah, from a bigger picture picture standpoint, there's got to be a better way to organize, of course, but, you know, there's sort of a bridge in the meantime of, hey, this could be not too hard to set up. There's a whole bunch of them out there right now. They are serving the purpose of connecting people who have skills with people who have money that want to pay them for it. And as long as that exists, there is some sort of real economic interaction. I mean, people are performing skills, even if they are just developing software. <laughs> they're, but, they're but still... you, have a, uh, you still have a dual coincidence. You have to have the individual in a certain space and time who provides us the service, and you have to have that same individual in a certain space and time who needs that, that service. It's a dual coincidence. So you're making an imperfect system more, you know, you're making it, still imperfect it's still got that basis money's supposed to re represent that money's supposed to replace the dual coincidence and i don't see where this solution is is solving that problem and, and that's the problem that all economics is trying to solve maybe in a job site that has 300 users but i, I can't agree with you on that because if you look at coinality.com just search around i mean go to upwork.com for example where they have more users this is a great example of matching freelancers to job providers. And this is how I get the majority of my help. Well, I mean, it's what's made me successful in all through my last 20 plus years of, of, of outsourcing. Without those sites, if those sites hadn't been there, I would have never been able to run my company. So, okay, so I'm, I think I'm, not, I'm not in that business, successful. so I'll just... I'm not in that business, so I'll just I'll just clam up for a well, minute. Well, I'm kind of no, I'm kind of interested to hear like what because I want I'm, I'm I always want you to elaborate more, Dan, and <laughs> I know it's I know it's like there's you know we've got sort of these fringe elements that are sometimes called to put together, but I'm curious, you know what what is the antithesis of the dual coincidence? You know what it what it what is the alternative? I mean, to having people who need work and finding people who can do the work you know what, it, what i guess what's the what's the what's the opposite or what's the what's the alternative to that well one of the problems is that you know work is is really limited by semantics if i don't describe myself in in a certain set or or um and reputation is not something that i often control i can't always control reputation or uh, th there's a lot of things that are, that are out of control um um and, and there's also the, the the sense that the work that gets done is the work that can be done virtually because you can't co-locate. So all the stuff that requires people to be co-located can't get done on these platforms. Um, and that pretty much involves most really, really significant things like, you know, complex projects and 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 uh, and things that. That in, well, things that need to be done locally. I mean, anything that has to be done in a certain space and time or whatever. Yeah, and you know, you also get confined in your in your uh, reputation. For example, I think the example I use a lot is an engineer who works for Boeing and an engineer who works for Bu for Starbucks could never work for the other company because they're reified by the database that they're housed in. So uh, you know, it, it, there's a lot of freedoms that are re removed from an individual. I'm the individual. I don't use those job sites because it, it's it's oppressive, and you know, I'm I'm doing what some other guy thinks is you know whatever I, I don't use them um but that's a that's a way of segmenting people i mean semantics and in, in the current uh you know when people are in a, it's it's a way of keeping people apart it's not a, p a way of, of bringing people together now you want to you really want to mix diverse combinations of knowledge assets you don't want to have the guy who did the job yesterday doing it today the manager is things are so complex the manager does not know what they want they, they think I want to do this great innovation, but they don't know because things are moving so fast. They don't have that statistical probability of being able to predict any kind of future. So, so you know, again, you're just making the old system better at what it does, which is oppress and push wages down. Um, and, and that's fine. And, you know, maybe there's some more mileage in that. 
but you know to get to a, a real revolutionary uh, system, you have to be able to work in in a different, um, in a smarter, more powerful way. And I'm not going to get into into that. It, it really just takes a 15 minute invest investment of time, which in watching a single video. But you know that that's all I have to really elaborate on on how Curiosity works. Uh, firstly, that's kind of the end of my updates uh, for this week. Um, does anybody have any Q and A regarding smart points? Well, you know, the ones? One thing I wanted to bring up that that I'm hearing this discussion, and I didn't want to interrupt it, um, even though it seemed like it was kind of veering a little bit off course because it it opens up the idea of potentially working together with various projects like this so i don't know you guys don't necessarily agree on everything but i would definitely say that it would be worth it to discuss this further at some point in time and keep in mind that there are potential opportunities that we might not know about yet so i mean let's let's keep it open and i will definitely reach i just reached out to talent about coinality that's good because I did too, and he didn't get back to me on that. I thought it was really important. I mean, he's the guy who knows enough about smart coins to be able to integrate it with coinality.io, and that site should be coming out real soon. Uh, it has escrow services, fr uh, freelancer reviews, um, the whole bit. So I was kind of hoping that, hey, man, you guys have got this going. If, if you don't do it, if you don't create it, then I'm going to. I'm going to hopefully be able to integrate it. This, I mean, I'll pay what? I could probably develop an Upwork style site. Uh, let's see. And probably, yeah, probably about less than two months and under 10 grand, I could probably develop an Upwork level job site for smart coins. How would the escrow work, though? Isn't that a lot of uh, sort of bureaucratic uh, uh, framework you have to set up? I mean, you have to kind of run. A company to do that don't you to be able to handle the actual manual labor involved in solving disputes and things like that well from a, a lot of it cannot be about automate as much of the site as possible and then put somebody else in charge of running it i'm just going to build it i mean if nobody else builds it i will i mean it's just it's just one more opportunity you know well i think there's yeah. something to be said about you know the reality that we have major changes at the, the very base that that need to happen but you know these are more long term and i think i think something like this could be very useful as a sort of like you said uh, in genesis um things things still have some mileage left in them right you know we, we've still got sort of the uh the the um we've still got momentum in a lot of these different structures and and they're useful and that's what ken's saying like this is this is like it or not whether or not it's the perfect system and whether people are you know oppressed or or cornered into specific uh, categories and they're not able to freely express themselves or you know freely embrace their the totality of their you know potential or whatever it's still getting things done and from that standpoint you know Ken, if you can throw, uh, you know, a few grand at it and, and develop something useful and it can start to connect people and start to actually get momentum moving forward on certain things, then I, I think it's a great idea. OK, I'm not well, saying that Ken's doing something wrong or it's something I, I reject or anything. It, I'm just I'm just trying to say that there's um, and nothing that I'm saying contradicts or with or, or stops, you know, the existing system. It's 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 an augmentation of the existing system I'm trying to get to. It's it's not, you know, the same existing system. So I just want to let you know I'm not trying to be combative here. I'm just trying to offer Definitely. up something that could really, really open up your eyes to opportunities that are they're far beyond what is currently being imagined. Yeah, I'm just I'm just doing my whole synthesis thing here. Yeah, definitely definitely I, I'm uh, I'm on the sort of the same boat as struggling struggling to uh, to uh, reconcile the uh, reality of what could be with the practicality of, okay, well, you know, is this still a good idea? So, <laughs> but yeah, I, I appreciate your perspective a lot. And, and uh, I really want to, I'm really looking forward to seeing your uh, project moving forward as well, but sorry, I, I didn't mean to, you know, hijack anything here. Um, you so. are not hijacking anything crypto. And sometimes you have to um, just real quick. I'm going to hijack this. And remind everybody that you are valuable BitShares assets, and 
Um, I am working to ensure that we try to move forward with all those who attend these hangouts and participate in them uh, noticed. So I have kind of a, a little guest book slash credits list. Um, and we'll be giving you guys credit for making these hangouts possible uh, and pushing for project leads and uh, various representatives of various projects that come on here to consider share dropping tokens on you guys and potentially um, giving you guys special access to things before uh, other individuals. So just wanted to let everybody know about that. Please feel free to sign the guest list. Um, Kenko, do you have anything or Chris, do you have anything that you would like to bring up before you guys end this beautiful thing? I would like to just say that uh, this rocks and I look forward to uh, uh, selling these sims in Las Vegas, which I think is going to be a great market as they're very uh, crypto aware. Really? So, you know, the beauty of it is, is that it doesn't cost the merchant anything. So it's kind of a no-brainer for them. I mean, you're just pitching it to them as, hey, do you want to make some more money? <laughs> you know, it's it really comes down to it because we're not going to charge anything for the app. So all they got to do is install it. And if I have my way with their management, it's going to be, become part of their core product as well. So it'll be part of the default install. Have you, have you thought about some sort of... Uh, um you know, incentive program to get people out there on the street selling, or I, I think you might have talked about this before, but, you know, a referral program, an, an internal uh, referral program that you can pay people and get an army of uh, of, of sales bots out there uh, pushing the product. Um, I'm not a marketing guy, so <laughs> that's, I'm like the wrong person to ask about. Uh, about that, but I think that if we can get at least, I mean, the open POS holders, I and mean, you guys have a, have a state in this too, um, but that's pretty much how it's going to work. And like what Brindle Swan said, it's just, it's just getting it out there and mentioning it and going to the stores that you like going to or whatever and ask them, hey, do you guys um, accept smart coins yet? And they're going to be like, what? And then what I would like to do is just have like little um, business cards. I have business cards made up with uh, my information on the front, but on the back of the card, it has that, you know, the window decals that I made up um, last week where it says smart coins accepted here, Bitcoin accepted here. Well, it also has all the languages. It has like 22 languages listed. And then the Bitcher's Munich um, website is on mine. But these are just tiny little business cards that you can hand out to get businesses to just install the app. I mean, that's really all it takes to start getting some volume moving. So as soon as I get the app out there um, and, um, by March, uh, that's really all it's going to take. Just start handing out those little cards to people. Say, hey, do you guys take cryptocurrencies yet? I mean, if not, here, just, just install the app. You guys already use the software, so just try it out. And Chris is going to have the list of Odoo, um, Odoo businesses. So that's going to help you, too. It's like if you say, oh, yeah, we have a Walmart in our town, or yeah, we have... Uh, media marks, yeah, we have this uh, brewery or whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, you'll know exactly who to, to, to walk into and, and talk to them. I think Definitely. marketing that's... people are going to be a lot better at that than me, though. But I, that's what I'm going to do, at least and Chris and I will be doing here locally. But um, it's all about start a meetup group. That is the easiest way to meet business people, investors, um, I mean, everybody from every walk of life, man, just start a meetup group. Just go to meetup.com and start a group in, in your local town. That's the easiest way to start getting the, the word of mouth going. And I mean, they come to you. That's a much easier sale than you walking into their store and trying to sell them on something. You know what I mean? Definitely. Because then they're, they're interested in a you and what they're, what you're talking about already. So you're not going around to a bunch of uninterested individuals and wasting time. That's right. I've, I've always used that reverse sales approach. Just set up different things around town or whatever, or different little contests or whatever, where they're interested in that and they come to you, whether it be a meetup group or whatever. And then you're not selling them anything. You're just chit-chatting and you're having a beer and you're having a coffee or whatever. And it's like, oh, yeah, I got into cryptocurrencies a couple years ago and blah, blah, blah. And it just, 
one thing leads to another. Like, oh, really? All I got to do is install this free app? Well, yeah. Yeah, I want to go a step further and make like a cafe, you know, like um, in a German city, this cafe. You know, it'd be cool even just even to have like a booth or something outside, like where you just give, you know, where you sell coffee. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's a great idea, especially as the summertime, uh, you know, comes again. I mean, I've kind of thought about this for the last couple summers, but we haven't really had any product yet. But, you know, along the lines of, uh, you know, what, what am I, one of my ideas and think I, I, I'd like to do actually is, is to get a booth at, at a music festival and, and, uh, and go out there and, and sell Muse, you know, share Muse or, mm -hmm. you know, there'll have to be some sort of financial incentive. Those booths are expensive, but, um, Talking to people on the street actually is a lot of fun. Who anyone who's ever done that, whoever who's who's had a booth and who, you know, sells anything from coffee to donuts to you know an idea, um, it really is an effective tool. And everything you're saying too, Ken, I'm I'm thinking to myself as you're talking. Yeah, you know, you you don't call you say you're not a marketer, but um, you know, I th I think you got it well. in your you got it in your blood. Well, you know, certain people are. They're like, oh, you should advertise with these guys or advertise there or get a banner ad. And you know what, man? I've trained my eyes over time to ignore banner ads. And, Anyone who you know, is this... intelligent has. Right. And the thing is, like, if, if you're into, if you want to sell something to somebody, give them a reason to want to talk to you. It's, it's a reverse sales tactic. Just get out there and just go to a coffee shop. You don't, I mean, just get a glass of water man at a coffee shop and just hang out for a while and just talk to the guy next to you and next thing you know like wow that guy actually is a freaking banker at a major bank and then he's like he told his friend about you and he gave him your card and and so on and so on and it just it just grows organically man you don't have to be a salesperson you're just talking about something that you enjoy doing definitely Anyways, uh, I have got to make some dinner for my girls. So, um, if anybody else has anything, uh, well, let's go ahead and end it at this point right here because that leaves us about two hours for our hangouts today. And I just want to remind everybody to please consider signing the uh, Share Bits Mumble Hangout uh, guest book. And we will do, well, the Beyond Bitcoin Mumble Hangout guest book. And we'll be working on bringing some things forward. Uh, and I wanted to ask if we'd be able to uh, occasionally bring you guys on for updates in the future, Ken. Definitely, Fuzzy. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for attending. This has been another Beyond Bitcoin Hangout. We love working with the BitShares community and look forward to the Beyond Bitcoin community being able to reach out to the businesses that are developing and utilizing BitShares. So if you know any, bring them on board and we can do Hangouts and promote them as a community. And as always, Beyond Bitcoin is something that all of you can participate in by holding your own Hangouts and doing various other things. We are working on having a golden ticket system that will be able to give golden tickets to those who guest speak at Hangouts and organize events and things like that, that they can use to advertise on Beyond Bitcoin sites. There's going to be various other initiatives that we're going to be doing with silver, to, uh, silver, silver tickets and copper tickets. Uh, just wanted to let you guys know about that and keep in touch if you need anything from me or the Beyond Bitcoin team. And thank you for everything, everybody.